Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads. We are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. Now, look, Football Fridays, it's one of the best days of the week. I like overreaction Monday as well, without a doubt. And, of course, I love Sunday's post-game reaction podcasts. But Football Friday, it's about the anticipation, right? You know when people talk about vacation and going away or some sort of big event? The anticipation of waiting for that moment is almost just as much fun as, well, actually experiencing it. The build-up. It's almost as fun as experiencing what you're thinking about in the near future. And with that being said, that's how I feel on these football Fridays when I wake up in the morning. I'm drinking my cup of coffee. I'm going over some notes. I'm thinking about what's going to work, where the Eagles might struggle, thinking about the opponent. It's a beautiful way to spend my morning. Now, I just want to throw this out there. Make sure you sign up for the NFL Pick'em Football Pool presented by BetQL where we will be giving away weekly prizes and a grand prize courtesy of Rosnov Jewelers, a championship bracelet. All the information is in the description. Make sure you sign up. The password is Brody. Everything is down below in the description. Please check it out. The NFL Pick'em Football Pool, it's weekly. We had a blast week one. You get a chance to win stuff. You get a chance to win prizes. It's a no-brainer. Let's dive into some things. I expect a better performance from this team. I expect Doug Peterson to be better. I expect Carson Wentz to be better. I expect the offensive line to be better. I just expect them to play better. Lane Johnson coming back, huge addition. Doug Peterson stated that Nate Herbig was going to be the right guard for this football game. All right, we'll see how that goes. Lane Johnson and him being back, maybe that changes Nate Herbig. It definitely changes the communication on the line. Everyone needs to be better, though. Jason Peters looked his age last game. Jason Kelsey, he didn't have a magnificent performance. And oh, by the way, here's Aaron Donald, who's going to be lined up against the Eagles offensive line. That's going to be a brutal Brutal task. But if you want to look at the history of what the Eagles have been able to do against him, for what type of beast Aaron Donald is, they've done a decent job. Now, with the snap of your fingers, he can take off, throw you around, go sack Carson Wentz four times in a football game, right? I mean, we've seen him be explosive, insanely dominant against teams in this league, against offensive lines. But historically speaking, when it comes to this Eagle squad facing Aaron Donald, they've done well. They've done enough to win football games. All right, look at Doug Peterson and Sean McVay going head-to-head over the recent times. They've done enough clearly to win football games. So basing this off of what I've already seen out of these coaching staffs, specifically Stoutland, Well, you know, that gives me faith. That gives me optimism. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot out of you. And it's going to take a way better performance than what we were given. I can't wait to listen to the reactions heading into this week. Not really reactions. I guess it's more predictions. I will be taking your phone calls. That's right. Your phone calls very shortly. We got a bunch To get to. So I can't wait to hear the predictions. Are people still upset? Are people looking at it from an optimistic standpoint? We'll definitely dive into those in a bit. But Doug Peterson did state Friday before practice, you know, the aggressiveness depends on the opponent. And I wonder because, well, the Rams are better than the Washington football team. Will that aggressive mindset that he had right before half or on fourth and three, fourth and four, will that change because of, well, hold on, Jalen Ramsey is out there. Well, hold on, that defense is different. We saw Ronald Darby last week. He stinks. He's awful. You won't have that type of players on the other side. And you have a tougher matchup. 
So will that change the philosophy of Doug Peterson? It's kind of hard to think so, right? Because Doug Peterson seems to always be aggressive. 100% of the time, Doug Peterson seems to think, I got to step on their throats. So when I heard that, I almost took a few steps back. Like, wait a second, really? The hell? I don't know about that. So we'll see. My guess is he's still going to be obnoxiously aggressive. I saw something last week, though, that I think the Eagles can take advantage of. Zeke and the running backs for the Dallas Cowboys, they were able to catch the football and make a little bit of noise. So with Miles Sanders in the mix, will this Eagles offense be able to get him the football in the passing game and then he can make some explosive plays? I just question how much is he going to really go out there and perform? And not knocking him or knocking his talent by any means. I'm more saying we saw this Eagles organization look at Deshaun Jackson and go, load management, we want to kind of ease you in. Will they do the same with Miles Sanders? Is Miles Sanders going to be getting a hefty amount of carries, a ton of looks, or do they want to make sure they ease him in as well? But there's no doubt that he's a weapon that this offense needs. There's no doubt that that is going to make Carson Wentz more comfortable. And Doug also alluded to maybe doing a better job getting Carson Wentz rolling. He also said that touchdown that went to Zach Ertz, it was designed for J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. And Doug put together a beautiful set of scripted plays. You saw what this offense looked like early. Bang, bang, moving the ball, moving the ball. Rhythm, flow. Great place. And then as soon as that was over, they look lost. And everything fell apart. Well, that can't happen. So I'm happy that he mentioned maybe doing a better job at getting Carson Wentz rolling. Because guess what? He is so good. So good doing that. It's hard for me to comprehend how someone like Doug Peterson and these NFL coaches look at, look at Carson Wentz succeed in that area and then fail to put him in that position. So I I just wonder, though, that running back game and throwing them the football, whether it's a screen, whether it's utilizing Miles Sanders in other ways, maybe a wheel route, is there a way to get Miles Sanders the football in the throwing game that can benefit the Eagles? Some things concern me, though, no doubt. I think Higby can be an X factor. Will Roby Coleman have a tough time in the slot. Cooper Cup, is he going to have a tough time? When you look at size, guess what? Yeah, there's a huge advantage for the Rams in that area. And that's the reason why we all question Avante Maddox, too, on the outside. He seems to have a great mentality, and, and he seems to know how to utilize his skill set to make up for his lack of size. But in the slot, I think it'd be an issue. Higby can be an issue. I think that's where the Rams can take advantage. Also, keep in mind here, the run game was a factor for this Ram squad. Akers, Malcolm Brown. Are they going to run the football and tire this defensive front out? Don't know the current status of Brandon Graham at this moment. I'm recording this before the injury report comes out. Although, sources say that it is leaning towards optimistic. It it could happen, maybe not, but it could. So, Brandon Graham. Derek Barnett, though, looks like that's that's a go. Josh Sweat, Fletch, Malik Jackson. That is crucial. Stopping the run. If they want to have the identity of running, stop the run. Don't allow them to burn the clock to keep possession of the football. It looks like this Rams offense, who you normally think about Jared Goff, play action, all these weapons. When they had Brandon Cooks and they and Cooper Cup was going. Right? And who am I missing here? Who am I missing? Woods, Reynolds, Van Jefferson. You just think these weapons, bang, they're flying around, they're throwing the football. Well, last week against Dallas, you saw them run the ball. But I feel the Eagles can stop that from happening. 
I expect Malik Jackson and the interior Fletcher Cox to eat up on this offensive line. They should be able to do damage. They should be able to take control. And I expect them to. We need Fletch to have a big game. Like I expect the interior to have a fantastic football game. But I mentioned the matchups that I don't like for the Eagles when it comes to Higby, when it comes to Cup. If you stop them from running, are there matchups available for the Rams offensively in the throwing game where it won't matter? Now, this is when you look at the Eagles secondary and you go, well, they got better. You have a Darius Slay. You have a Vontae Maddox. And I agree that they're better, but is it enough? I didn't see enough out of Jalen Mills really in that first game to know what that position is all going to be about for him. I don't know how much I really got to look in a sense of what the linebackers are going to be like. You might have a better idea after what you see on Sunday. I I need more, though. I need more out of certain guys. J.J. Ortega, Whiteside. Come on, man. You need to be able to get separation, and you need to be able to catch the football. You got to get open and be available for Carson Wentz to even give you a chance, a fighter's chance. You got to work to get open. Jalen Rieger, how about this? Adam Kaplan of Inside the Birds claimed that his sources said that throw by Carson Wentz at the end of the first half, that should have been a touchdown. At first glance, we all thought it was Carson Wentz. It was all Jalen Rieger. He did not run fully in that route. And if he did run fully in that route, that's an automatic touchdown. The throw by Carson Wentz was actually perfectly placed. It was on the rookie wide receiver for not going full out on the route. So he needs to pick it up. And I like Jalen Rager. But that type of stuff, it can't happen because that's the difference in scoring a touchdown, taking the momentum back. At the time in that game, it was 17-7. And the Red, the Washington football team, excuse me, just scored... And it was crushing. It was deflating. But that would have been a moment for the Eagles to take it right back. Rookie mistakes are going to happen. I I get it. I understand. But I'm just saying. He needs to be better in that moment. He learned from it. Okay, now it can't happen again. No more. Now it can't happen again. I hope Goddard can follow up the big night. With a big afternoon he had. Big afternoon. I want to see how the Rams try and limit him. I want to see if Zach Ertz is going to be there mentally. I want to see if he's focused because that drop that happened, I know he had the touchdown and I thought he was going to have a great game from that moment, but that fourth and four that he dropped or fourth and three, whichever one it was, there was uh, the fourth and three and the fourth and four. I forget which one exactly that was during that moment, but that's not being prepared. That's worrying about the outside noise. That's not being properly dialed in. You need to see the ball. Let it hit your hands and catch it and catch it. And he's too much of a pro's pro to make that type of error in that spot. And I expect more out of him. I expect him to go to the football field, to go to the link on Sunday and be in a different mindset and be in a different state when it comes to what he's thinking about in his head. It's not easy. I get it. But as a pro in this league... When you go back and forth and you're unhappy with your current situation, you need to unplug and just focus on the game for Sunday. You have to. Now, this episode of Sports Talk with Broads is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power. And with over 20 years of experience in the industry, they are home to your solar experts. They provide solar energy systems, $0 electric bills, Water purification systems, clean, healthy, soft water for your family, backup energy services, tree removals, battery storage, electrical upgrades, and many more. Much more. Make sure you check out their information. It's in the description. Let's take some phone calls here. Let's take some phone calls. I can't wait to hear what the people think about Sunday's matchup. I expect to get a little bit of both. I expect to get people that think Doug Peterson's the worst coach ever. Carson Wentz stinks. This offense is embarrassing. This defense can't get the stop that they need. I expect to hear that side, and then I expect the, look, it was one week. I I sense you get a little bit of both. We'll see. Hey, Hunter, I got a prediction for tomorrow's game for you. So I think the run game is going to be the most important thing 
throughout this entire thing. It's going to take a little bit to get it going just because it's Sanders' first game back. But I feel like it's going to be the major key. It's going to open up a lot of space for Carson Wentz and hopefully make the offense a little bit better. But So I'm going to say an Eagles win. Not going to have a score prediction, but I got something funny for you. So instead of going down to the mall for Sunday, my dad's actually going to be down the shore. <laughs> So he doesn't have to watch the Eagles down the shore. Just to give a little background information on that, uh, his father actually reached out to me on what did he, did he reach out on Twitter? Like, he's anti Eagles. His father is anti Eagles, and, and Amadeo is a big fan of the show and always has been and always has been supportive. So we've been connecting, and now we're good friends, all based off of this. So it's really awesome, but. His father's anti-Eagles, big Flyers fan, right? Hates the Eagles. And he claims he will never watch the Eagles on Sunday. He'd rather go to the mall. Excuse me? A one o'clock on Sunday? You'd rather go to the mall? Go to the mall than watch the Eagles. And come on now. That's a joke. I say he's not even a sports fan. He's a fake fan. How are you a Flyers fan, right? Like a Philadelphia sports fan? And then you hate the Eagles. It doesn't make any sense. I can't support that logic. So I guess this weekend, uh, he's going to the shore so he doesn't have to watch the birds. What a sick joke. But getting to your points about, you know, the actual game, what really matters. The offensive line will definitely create more holes, I hope, for Miles Sanders and this run game. So just from establishing the run standpoint, I would expect this team to be able to do that to be able to get more running plays involved because what does that do? Oh, well, it opens up the playbook more for play action. Nobody bites on play action when you're not actually running the football. So now this opens up a lot more. Now that makes it tougher for the offensive line when you do get to the play action part of things, right? They're going to be able to execute. Are they going to be able to execute is the question. They are going to be able to execute. Are they going to be able to execute that side of things? Hold their blocks. Make sure Carson Wentz doesn't get sacked. Make sure Carson Wentz has time for that play to develop. And that's where Lane Johnson coming back in, I hope, helps out the communication. Because a lot of the discussion, if you didn't hear my Thursday podcast about this team heading into this week and this matchup on the Rams, A lot of the film study shows it wasn't so much the offensive line getting torched one-on-one. It wasn't so much about the individual linemen just getting roasted. It was more about the communication factor, which is huge, which is a problem. It still doesn't make me feel great about it because, as you see, look what failure in communication does. But with Lane Johnson returning, that's where you think that will make a big-time difference. What's up, Rhodes? Got a couple bold takes right here for you. First of all, I think the Eagles are going to get a win on Sunday. Bounce back performance. First bold take. Greg Ward is going to have two touchdowns, probably around 80 to 100 yards on Sunday. Second bold take. Defense gets three turnovers, a couple intercept, two inter- I'm thinking two interceptions, one fumble recovery. Final bowl take, there's going to be a big play from our special team. And yeah, go birds, baby. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is just absolutely ridiculous. The only thing that I can get behind is the special teams play. I feel the special teams can make the play, absolutely. Three turnovers. This team doesn't generate turnovers. I can maybe support a fumble recovery. I can't support two interceptions. Who the hell is making that happen on the defensive side of the football? Avante Maddox had a chance last week. He dropped it. This team, they drop opportunities. They drop the interceptions all the time. And Greg Ward, you're calling for 80 to 100 yards and a couple tutties? I think you are being ridiculous. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I come on the next show and go, what? The caller was right. But I find that very hard to believe that that's going to happen. That was absurd. Bold, 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 bold statements is the way to describe that. Yo, bros, what's good? Uh, So we got the Rams this weekend. 
honestly, and the Rams surprisingly don't scare me all that much. I was actually kind of surprised they beat Dallas. Um, overall, the thing was very impressive. Obviously, their D-line is just a beast, and I think the matchup to watch is going to be our offensive line versus their D-line. I mean, if they can get this anywhere near the same pressure the Skins got, it's going to be another rough day for Carson. Hopefully, Miles coming back will help alleviate some of that pass rush. Hopefully, we'll be able to hit him over the top. I'm thinking d Jax or Riga are going to burn Jalen. I'm just saying. We'll see. Maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, <laughs> All right, maybe. Well, you saw the play at the end of the Dallas Cowboys game where he sold it a bit, but there was an extension of the arm. Is it possible that Jalen Ramsey gets toasted? Yeah, I guess it's possible. Jalen Rager and Deshaun Jackson do have a ton of speed. That'll be interesting. You go with offensive line versus defensive line, and when you have somebody like Aaron Donald on the other side, I think it's very reasonable to go down that road, and that is definitely, and I mean definitely, something your eyes should be glued on when it comes to this matchup. I also think, though, that slot situation should be recognized. Roby Coleman. Now he's going up against his former team. He's a good slot corner. No doubt about it. Like, he definitely is solid. But I look at the size advantage throughout, and it's a possibility that that's going to be something that the Rams could take advantage of. Seems people are optimistic. Started off the call by saying, the Rams don't scare me. Surprised they beat Dallas. Interesting. I don't think the Rams are a bad team. I don't think they're some elite superpower team. Some fantastic stud team. But they're a good football team. They can absolutely have a chance every single Sunday. No matter who they're playing. Even if it is a New Orleans Saints or a Ravens or a team like that. I think they're in the mix in those games. They're not just going to lose by double digits and be completely out of it. So I'm not going to go to the extreme and say they insanely scare me considering that I take the Eagles and I think they're going to be able to properly win this one and bounce back. But I don't think it's going to be some cakewalk either and it's going to be a tough battle. And I'm not claiming that you stated it's going to be some blowout and the Eagles are just going to handle business because you brought up some great points about Aaron Donald and Miles Sanders coming back. And look, speaking of the offensive line, Doug Peterson, before practice on Friday, he got feisty. He got a little pissed off with some questions. Someone asked about the blitz. And and it was, you know, the Washington football team blitzed. Do you think that was a product of knowing your offensive line was inexperienced? And he snapped back. Why, why do you associate the blitzing with the offensive line? He snapped back a bit at the reporter. And I'm thinking, wow, Doug, what the hell? He had this sarcastic smile on his face. One of those ugly, sarcastic smiles that I, that I hate. He said it was on the running back, it's on the quarterback, and it's on the offensive line. Well, you mentioned Miles Sanders. And I think that could be big with the protection side of things as well. Hey, bro. So... You know, you might condemn me for saying this after a horrible loss against Washington, but I think we're going to rebound on Sunday. Um, I think the team's kind of just going to, like, look back at yesterday's loss, kind of, like, figure out really what did go wrong. And we're also getting uh, a little bit stronger with uh, Sanders and, um, you know, Lane Johnson coming back. So I don't think Wentz is going to be sacked nearly as much. Um, going against Aaron Donald, that's going to be tough. But a uh, fun fact, we've actually never allowed a sack against Aaron Donald. So, But then again, we've only played Aaron Donald twice, I think. So hey, it'll be it'll be really interesting. But uh, I guess we'll just have to see. But um, I think, you know, really the entire offense is really just going to go over what went wrong uh, last week, and including Wentz, man. I know that – yeah. Last week's loss totally killed him, and his performance did too. So I think we're going to win this game. It's going to be a close competitive game, but I think you're going to see a different Eagles team than what we saw last week. All right, man. I would agree. I would agree. And and I'm looking at what I've seen with the Doug Peterson-Carson Wentz era. They do bounce back, and it's crazy. We took four calls so far, and it seems, hey, we're going to bounce back. We're going to bounce back. It's so funny, the difference between the overreaction Monday and then the Friday. It's like 
Monday, you overreact. Tuesday, you're still upset. Wednesday, you're upset, but you're moving forward. Thursday, okay, next week, Friday, hey, we're going to win. Saturday, let's go, Birds. And then Sunday, the reaction either goes to the positive, and then on Monday, you think you're winning the Super Bowl. Tuesday, you're winning the Super Bowl. It's just so funny how the emotions change. Carson Wentz, though, I, I think that you look throughout his career, and you don't see a, a stretch of just disgusting, pathetic performances back to back to back consistently. So with that, it shows me there is a road for him to turn the page and not have the same type of second, third, and fourth quarter that we witnessed last Sunday. I see an opportunity for him to change the narrative this Sunday. I see Doug Peterson putting him in a better position to succeed. I see everyone getting healthier out there, and that can change the entire offense. I look at the entire package, from health to head coach and the decisions. And the fact that, I'm not going to say you have your backs against the wall, but I do think that there's a different sense of urgency. I do think that there's a realization in that locker room like, yo, fellas, we can't start the season off 0-2. So knowing that you dropped game one in the way that you did, it's almost like a wake-up call. It's almost like you wake up the next morning and you know, okay, this week's going to be different. They're dialed in differently during the week of practice. It's all about the focus level heading into the next week when you give one up the way that you did. So with all of that piled together, that's what helps me lead to think we have a good chance in front of us. Hey, bro, what's going on? I was thinking, um, I've, I've, been, I've been reflecting over this, and, there, and, and I've been thinking of two players looking back, and I'm thinking it, it was just interesting to me. Um, the first one is Fletcher Cox. And I, I looked at his stats, and he literally had a combined two tackles, two, the entire game, two. And I'm thinking – Washington's offensive line isn't the greatest thing ever. And so, as Fletcher Cox is, is, is our superstar on defense, if you will, one of our superstars, I feel like that he needed to be a bigger impact, and he was really, really quiet. And I noticed that during the game, but especially after I saw the stats. The second player is Jalen Mills. It was a big question mark on with him transitioning to safety, how he was going to play. Personally, I thought he played pretty well. I mean, I, I thought the whole secondary played pretty well, but... I noticed there was one play where Haskins rolled to his right, and he and as he slid, which I figured he he'd be down. But Mills, I mean he he I mean he popped the ball out. You know, I thought I thought he played pretty well, but I just want to hear your thoughts on Fletcher Cox and Jalen Mills. Yeah, I think Fletcher Cox needs to be better, no doubt about it. He stops the run. The reason why the Eagles are so successful over the years is. Fletcher Cox has a huge impact on what they do with the run game. They stop the run game, and that's huge. To make a team one-dimensional, that is what makes you succeed. But he needs to be better. And I think that this matchup is going to allow him to penetrate and really, hopefully, be a better version of himself. More of the Fletcher Cox that we were accustomed to when he was dominating football games. In terms of Jalen Mills, I just don't know if I saw... Enough. I, I just don't know if there was enough in that game week one for me to have a legit takeaway on what he can do. The Washington football team had so many short fields. The defense in the secondary, I thought they did fine, but it wasn't as if they really had a lot to to work with. I, I don't know. It's not like that team was powerful. Yes, they have Terry McLaurin, but it's not as if... I can judge the team off of how they played against the Washington football team's offense, if that makes sense. All right. Week two, Eagles-Rams. What do I worry about from the Los Angeles Rams? In no particular order, that would be Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, and a little bit of Aaron Donald. I, I you know, the Rams have a good offense, but not a – you know, spectacular offense. And to me, this is a must game for the Eagles. If you start off 0-2 in the conference 
that's tough to overcome. I like the Eagles 24 to 13 in this one. I think they find a way to get it done. Hopefully they'll have a better game plan coming in and hopefully Wentz won't play hot potato with the football. 24 13 Eagles. Huh. All right. I, I don't know if you're going to hold the Rams to 13 points. Although, if you think about it, they only scored 20 against the Dallas Cowboys. So it's not like that offense was insanely explosive, like I said uh, before. But with that, also, the counterpoint is they ran the ball a lot. And when you run the ball a lot, you have the possession, you milk the clock, right? You have the football, and there's not as much time to boom. Touchdown, boom, touchdown, boom, touchdown. So I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what this team is going to be about, how they respond, what they look like, both sides of the ball, because this is more of a test to the defense this week, and it's still a test for the offense to be able to get rolling and get really flowing when it comes to creativity. I want to see more creativity. I want to see Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager. I want to see how Jalen Rager could be used more. He had the one catch of 55 yards. I want to see more out of Jalen Rager. He could have had that touchdown though. He could have had that touchdown. I want to see Dallas Goddard. Can he do what he did last game and duplicate it? Can Zach Ertz be a difference maker? Will Carson Wentz get the ball out of his hands if the play is not there? And will Doug Peterson call a better game. All these questions we will find out on Sunday. Thank you all so much for listening and I will see you next time.